hello and welcome to my channel in this video we will talk about plotting in matplotlib using subplots um, what subplot actually does is it gives you the, uh, the ability to split your figure into rows and columns and place your plots at the various locations that you want so you split your plotting figure and by using subplots we split that figure into six, two rows, and three columns. And by doing so, we can place one plot here, pl place another plot there, place another one there, another, and so on. And display all of them in one figure. So that is the purpose of subplot. So here we see the syntax of subplot and how it is used. The plotting figure, this figure has been split into six, two rows, and three columns. And from here, you see that the plotting figure has been split into six, two rows, three columns. And then the first plot goes to the first location here, the second one, the third one, and this is the fourth one. This is the fifth one and this is the sixth one. So basically this is the syntax of subplot. So we go to the IDE to try to demonstrate this more clearly. Now in the IDE, you can see I've imported um, matplotlib as PLT. I've imported um, pi, lin space, sine, cos, and tan from numpy. I also import subplot to avoid having to type plt.subplot all the time. You can do that, but I'll just import it. So from matplotlib.pyplot, import subplot. Okay, so now I have subplot. I'll create my data set. So I've created my um, data set x x1 x2 i've calculated the sine and the cosine of this data and try to plot that so plotting these two data sets as i've shown here if i if i run this now i have the two plots in one figure so I could split this figure into two to have one row and two columns and then plot the first graph in the first column and plot the second graph in the second column. So to avoid plotting these two on the same, having these two plots in the same figure, I will call subplot and then I like I said, I want to split my plotting figure into two columns and one row. So the first one is one row, so I give one. The second is two, two because I want it in two columns. And then my first plot, do I want it in the first column or the second column? So I want it in the first column. So I'll do this. And then I pick this plot and put it under here. And to make this more interesting, let me give this figure one and give um, this figure two and then I'll import the figure. And now if I run this, we have two figures. We have two figures. The first one figure one contains the two plots in one figure and then the second one contains just one plot in one column if i do make this two so i want the location of this plot in the second column if i run that you will see that the location the position of the plot has changed so what uh, we could do further is make this one again and bring 
I'll bring this here, make it two, and then I'll put a second plot in the second location, and then I run it, and we have the first figure where they are all on in the same figure, the two plots are on the same figure, and then the second figure where we split, we plot them separately, but on the same figure. So this is the relevance of subplotting. So after the basic introduction, we could try to do something a little bit more challenging. Um, in this example, we split it into two. So I will try to split it into six and plot all six on the same figure. So I'll just close that and I'll take this data. I'll bring it here and I'll comment this out and then I'll add a third variable and then so I'll call this um, Z I'll call this Z1 and I'll create a third one for tan so maybe I'll just call it T and then I'll make it tan X3 so I have this and then I'll create another pair of data. Yeah, I'll try to modify this by multiplying by the exponential of the values. So I'll import exp as the exponential and then I'll come here and do this y2 equals to y1 times exponent of minus x1 so I'll just do this and then I copy that and I'll call that z2 z1 and x2 and I'll come here too and make it t2 T1 and X3. I'm just creating more data by just modifying, slightly modifying the sinus set by multiplying it by the exponent. So the values will be a little bit different. It's the same values. This is the sine. This is the co this is the cos and this is the tan. But I'm just multiplying by something to modify the values a bit to make the plot a little bit different. So now that I have this data set, I would like to split my uh, plotting figure into six. I want to split my plotting figure into six, so I call subplot. I want to do six plots in one figure, so I will split it into six. So two rows, three columns, and my first plot, of course, I want it to be at the first location, so it's one. So I call plt dot show and then my first plot I want to plot this x1 against the y1 so I will call plt dot plot and then x1 y1 and then I'll give it some marker so I'll make it green and then I'll give it star marker and then if I run this now you see that I have my first plot in this location. This is the first location. Just for demonstration, if I made this five, it will go to the fifth location, which is the middle of of the second row. So yeah, so this is the middle of the second row. I'll keep that on the first location and show you that again. This is it. Now, this is my first plot, which is the sine plot. So I have the plot of the sine, this one. And now I want to plot this, which is the sine times the exponent of negative values. So I want that directly under 
the sign plot so I show the sign plot again this is it here and I want my second plot to be under this so I have the sign and then the modification of the sign plot under we know that it has been split into six so the location here will be four because this is one there's a second one here two there will be a third plot here three and this is four this location is four so in the subplot I'll pick this come here and then I'll make this for location four and then I'll pick this bring it here and change the y1 into y2 and then I can give it a different color maybe yeah I'll give it red and then I'll give it something a different marker I'll give it the hexagonal marker and then I have to bring the plot to the end of it and I run that and then now I have two plots we have the sign plot and the sign plot times the exponential of the negative values of x so this is at location 1 and this is at location 4 so similarly I would like to do that for the cosine here and then the cosine times the exponential here and then the tan and then the tan times the exponential at this location so this is location 6 this is location 5 this is 4 this is 3 and this is 2 so I'll just take this put it here I want the cosine location 2 and 5 the co cosine the, f uh, the cosine is that one so I'll make here that one and make this x2 and here also x2 and this would be z2 and then I can change this to black and this I'll make it blue and then I run it so now you see that I have the cosine here and then the cosine times the exponential here so we can do that again for the tan and I want to add the location 3 and this at the location 6 so I could give it a magenta and give it a diamond uh, marker and then this I could give it this color the kind color and then I will make this one the plus marker and then I have to change the data so here is T1 is T1 I'll just make it X3 and here also X3 and here will be T2 and then if I run this I have my six plots on the same figure so this is basically the relevance of um, subplot and how it can be used so you can split your figure into rows and columns and make your plots at these um, locations so thanks for watching if you like the video feel free to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this thank you